It is a taming survival game. Question. Which one should I tame first? In the last episode, we did the setting, crafting basic tools and build a base. However, the character is so often overloaded, and that is painful. In this episode, we are going to do our first tame, that would solve the problem and give other benefits. For me, the best tame for beginners on the island is... Parasaur. And I will show you what it can do for beginners when we tame one. Let's prepare. The first thing we need to make things smoother, is bolas. Throwing one at the parasaur, it will be rooted for 10 seconds. 10. Seconds. I'm suggesting to use bolas because parasaurs are not mean. They do not fight back. Instead, they will run away as fast as they can when being attacked. Beginners do not have a lot of points spent on stamina and running speed. That means if you are trying to chase them without any use of items or traps, you will need some luck, hoping they will run into some rocks or woods and get stuck. Depending on the level of the parasaur that you are going to tame, you might need a wooden club if it is higher than level 50, because dinos with higher levels have higher torpidity. In other words, it will take more attacks to knock them out, and wooden club gives more torpidity than punches. If you have spare and gram points, you can prepare the saddle too so that as soon as you tame one you can ride on it. It takes some hides, thatches and woods to craft the saddle. If you are lucky to find one with high level, you might as well want to prepare some narcotics to keep the parasaur unconscious. It can be crafted using a pestle, with 5 narco berry and 1 spoiled meat. Now that we are ready, let's go. Hold your left mouse button to start swinging the bola, and release the button to throw the bola at the parasaur. Switch to a wooden club or fist when the bola hits and start attacking the parasaur's head. It will take double amount of hits if you miss the head. If the bola expire, there is a cooldown before the parasaur can be affected by another bola. At level 50, it will take 34 hits on the head to knock out a parasaur. As soon as you see or hear the dino being knocked out, stop your attack, as any extra damage will reduce the taming efficiency. Once a dino is knocked out, you can track the taming progress even if you move far away from it. Press F to access the dino's inventory and press T or drag to put mayho berries in there. It is the best food for taming beginners have access to at low level. The better food you give the dino, the faster it goes, and the more taming efficiency you get. Taming efficiency affects the level increment when it is tamed up. At 100% efficiency, the dino will get about 50% increment in terms of level. For example, if you tame one at level 15, with 100%, it will be level 23 when tamed up. While waiting, you can do other things, or guard the tame. If you are guarding, do not stand right next to it because if any mean creatures attack you, they might accidentally attack the unconscious dino that is being tamed and reduce the efficiency. Some even suggest it is safest to move outside the render distance, which, I have not tested it. However, if you are playing on a very crowded server, that will not be an option. Some creatures make specific sound when they aggro on you. That will be your fight or flight moment. At the default spawning point, there can be some billows like this one. With cloth armor, you can fight one or two with some kiting and dodging. Or you can outrun them to a different direction so they will not target your tamer base. It is up. Let's talk about what a parasaur can do for beginners. First, it is a tame slash base guard. When set to auto frighten in turret mode, it will alert you when there are main creatures around and scare off small creatures like dillos and birds like that one. This will increase your success rate of taming. Second, which is the main reason for me to tame one, is, to carry things. It has much higher weight stats than the character, and extend the spoil timer of food. That is why I did not craft the storage box in the last episode and prioritize other engrams first. Third, it is rideable, with decent movement speed, and radar function with a right click. These are especially useful in early game stage where the players do not have strong combat power. Also, with left click, you can harvest berries and thatches faster than without one. Last but not least, you can use equipped items like swords, bows, and guns, although there are better options later if you need to do so. That is all for this episode. And yes, the house is still, empty. Difficult to find the door, and, empty. We will fill the house with something useful in the next one. I, guess? Anyway. Dust, out.